How do you envision this happening and how quickly can it be done? Are we talking about the next 12 months? You know, um, I'm thinking, you know, of the baby boomers that have quarter acre blocks still, uh, they have a fair bit of land, um, they don't want to be uh, the bank of mum and dad. So uh, perhaps you have a couple of generations living on uh, one housing block, uh, the younger generation in a modular home. Is that what you're seeing here? That's part of the solution. Yeah, I mean, that those are the kind of things we want to explore. So, you know, we put money in the budget this week to develop the planning frameworks to make that happen. Also, the minimum standards for the homes, because as I said, you know, we want these to be quality places to live. But I visited the Q-Build facility up in Queensland, um, and some of those homes are really impressive. You know, they're, they're modern homes, they've got good amenity, they're high quality. And I think people accept that, you know, we want to build more homes. We want to build more social and affordable housing in particular, but that is going to take time. That is going to take years. And for some people, we don't have years. And this could be a solution, as I said, particularly in some of our regional areas where we're having incredible difficulty getting nurses, getting GPs, yep. um, getting police officers. If we can look to bring on modular homes very quickly for some of those regional communities. I think it can be really good to boost their economy and provide them access to the skills that they need. Yep, OK. Modular homes certainly better than um, sleeping in your car, which many people are increasingly doing at the moment. Rose, I want to talk to you about Airbnb uh, and the short-term rental market, as you eloquently put it just a couple of moments ago. You're under a review now. So let me just ask you, when is this review going to be complete and what are you actually looking at? So we're looking to complete the review by the end of the year. So, you know, a couple of months time. And what are we looking at? Everything. Everything is on the table. You know, we know that the short term rental market plays an important role, particularly for a lot of regional tourist economies. You know, we want people to go and visit some of our beautiful towns and, and access to short term rentals is really important to support those regional economies who rely on tourism. But we also know that there is a negative impact. In, particularly in some localised areas. You know, the statistics speak for themselves. In some regional towns in New South Wales, we are seeing a real explosion of short-term letting that yeah. is making it harder for people to find long-term permanent rentals. And so we are exploring what we can do to try and incentivise people to put properties on the long-term rental market and better regulate short-term letting so that we get the benefits but minimise some of those negative impacts. So do you like the way Victoria is, uh, has, has done it? They've essentially just added a tax. Yeah, look, I mean, it's it's an attractive option in that it's quite simple. We're, we're going to talk to the Victorian government about the details, some of the modelling that's gone into... But I can't see... Them. Can you see, Rose, that it's going to make a huge impact? I mean, it just gets... The cost just gets passed on uh, and people still want to use Airbnb like the incentive financially if you're an invest if you have an investment property still is there to do Airbnb rather than long-term rental right yeah I mean I think you're probably right which is why we do want to talk to the Victorian government about some of their modeling you know does a 7.5 percent levy really incentivize the transfer of properties from yep. the short-term market to the long-term market. I'm not sure that it does. I mean, it may generate a source of income that you can then look to reinvest mm. in the supply of more long-term rentals. So, you know, those are the kind of modelling um, underpinnings of those systems that we do want to look at because yep. I agree with you. I don't want to pretend to people that that is going to be a big move, incentivise a big movement when the modelling doesn't bear that out. And that's what we're looking at right now. Yeah, look, you don't want to... I get that you don't want to change the rules on investors. You know, people have bought investment properties as, you know, to have a, a second passive income and they have every right to do that. And you don't want to pull the rug from out underneath them. But isn't the priority here, when you go to a rental uh, anywhere around Sydney, there are 100 people behind you and 100 people in front of you. And that is a crisis. Absolutely. But I think the interesting thing about short-term letting, and again, this is why you need to do the work, how much of it is investors who you know just have the property on the short-term rental market permanently how much is it with people with a holiday home you know it's their second dwelling and they visit it sometimes and then it's on the short-term rental market at other times those people as you say it's going to be very difficult for them to incent to incentivize them to move the property permanently to the long-term market because that's their beloved family holiday home so those are the challenges here you are right 
fundamentally, we need more permanent long-term rentals. We do. And mm. how we do that, regulating the short-term rental market, just building more housing, that's the dynamics that the state governments Australia-wide are working through and we're working with the Commonwealth. That's the challenge and, you know, we're just trying to develop a suite of solutions. Okay, so uh, let's wrap this up then. Rose, you are going to look at the Victorian model, but you think there's probably not enough incentive in that to really shift the dial for renters. So when it comes to Airbnb, I, I, you want to let this review run for another three months, but you're looking at something that might make a little bit more of an impact. Oh, look, not, not necessarily. I mean, it may be that there is no way to use a levy to drive short-term rentals onto the long-term rental market, but that's what we're exploring. Oh, I mean, I'm not we talking are... about a levy. I'm not talking about a levy per se. I'm just talking about any measure. Yeah, I mean, we're exploring what measures will actually work. I mean, and could you limit, you know, like what Byron Bay Shires are trying to do at the moment, limit, well, limit the I mean, amount that you can use Airbnbs for? Yeah, you could do that in some localised areas. I mean, again, there's some evidence that that actually doesn't necessarily deliver the incentive either. And some councils are really keen on that, like Byron, other councils that I've met with, like Yurubadala on the south coast, they're you know quite opposed to that. And so there is a difference of opinion, even mm. amongst those local government areas um, that are heavily impacted. So in New York, as, I mean, let's look at yeah. somewhere like New York, what they're um, considering doing, only allowing people to Airbnb if it's, you know, a spare room and mm. the owner is still in the home. Yeah, there's a lot of different models internationally that have been tried. I mean, the different European cities have all got different regulatory approaches as well. That's why we're looking at it. We are exploring what actually can work. How can we support the economies that rely on tourism? It's a huge part of regional New South Wales in particular, great places to visit. Everyone should visit them. Um, but how do we encourage that without negatively impacting on the housing market. Finding that balance is challenging. If there was a single solution, we'd do it. We'd push the button, we'd pull the lever. It doesn't exist. It has to be, you know, a comprehensive look at things and that's the work that we're doing now. All right, Rose, great to talk to you. We're going to speak to your planning minister after the break because, uh, yeah, we're very exercised about this. Our viewers are very interested indeed. Thanks so much. No worries.